Hello and welcome to Swipe. Coming up, the electrifying world of racing. We take a closer look at Formula E. Putting the science into sport. The human performance lab that should help improve our athletes. The game in Spain. Gran Turismo's creator heads to Andalusia to launch the sixth in the series. And it's time to fill your stocking. We review a few of the main games that are fighting it out for sales this Christmas. It was once mockingly described as the milk float challenge, but now the world of motorsport and technology is revving up, or should that be charging up for the start of Formula E? The FIA's new electric car championship sees 10 cities turned into racetracks next year, starting in Beijing and ending here in London. All 10 team spots have now been filled, but will fans get behind the sport? And will it achieve its goal of boosting electric car sales? Sky's Joe Tidy reports. It looks like Formula One, but have a listen to this. Formula E is the FIA's brand new all-electric championship. A greener, quieter and more sustainable form of motor racing. And it's not just the cars that are different. This championship's been designed for the digital age. Computer gamers can play live in real time as the races unfold and fans can give their favourite drivers a speed boost by voting for them on a smartphone. You will have a button in the, in the steering wheel that gives you an extra boost of power and drivers will get it through their fans. So the fans will vote and uh, through social media they will get this extra boost so they can overtake the car in front of them. All of this is Alejandro Agag's idea. The Spanish F1 TV rights owner wants to improve the image and innovation of electric cars. But since launching, Formula E has suffered its own image problem, being dubbed the milk float challenge by skeptics. Now that's starting to change. All 10 team spots have now been filled, with four-time F1 champion Alain Prost starting a team, and the two final spots taken by a mystery Hollywood A-lister and former F1 team owner Sir Richard Branson. There's obviously very compelling um, environmental reasons why this is better than some other sports, but to be frank, we loved Formula One, uh, and we think that we're going to love Formula E. No one knows because it's just about to start. Electric car makers like Tesla, who opened up shop in Britain last month, hope the championship will boost interest. Figures show e-car sales are at a record high in Britain, but take-up is slow and manufacturers say motorists are put off by a lack of infrastructure. 10,000 charge points have been installed by the government, but companies like Tesla and Nissan are beginning to install their own charging areas to get things moving themselves. Alejandro admits that battery power will also be an issue for Formula E, as drivers will need to switch cars halfway through the race to keep going. To see drivers jumping from one car to another is going to add a completely new element. But it's hoped as the teams compete and the sport evolves, electric car technology will improve with it. And it might even get some petrol heads turning too. Joe Tidy, Sky News. You're watching Swipe coming up. Gran Turismo heads to Spain to show off about its sixth incarnation. But first... In professional sports, nothing is left to chance these days. To be physically and mentally ready to compete, the modern-day athlete has to have every aspect of the performance analysed. We got a brief glimpse into how this tech-heavy world works at GlaxoSmithKline's Human Performance Lab this week when Sky Sports' Pete Graves went along. Yes, I'm here outside the GSK Human Performance Lab. It's very exciting because cameras have never been allowed inside here before, so let's go and have a look what's inside. So we're now making our way into the lab and this uh, is a world leading science and research facility. Okay, well now we're inside the lab and there's so much to see. I'm walking now on a state-of-the-art 4G AstroTurf. This is so athletes can train on uh, the equivalent of grass and the surfaces that they'll be playing on in their sport. And up here on the wall are the six pillars of what this performance lab is all about. Strength, stamina, cognition, hydration, metabolism and recovery. It's great to have that kind of that scientific approach behind the game. I think it's becoming a lot more scientific these days. I mean, everyone sees the kind of pouches in the back of the shirt, which are GPS units, people wear heart rate monitors. So here it's about kind of continuing to improve, whether it's with nutrition and stuff and seeing what the body actually needs, whether it's more calories, less protein, more protein, less carbs, stuff like this, and, and being able to make sure you keep on improving. 
So this is the Cognition Lab. It's where they deal with brain training. So sportsmen's reaction times, decision making. And what they say is in here, they're using this state of the art equipment to train everything above the neck. In there is the Hydro Lab. And what they do here is they look at the effects that water can have on muscle pain and recovery. Well, in here is the physiology lab, and it's where the really scientific stuff happens, and they take a detailed look at athletes' performance. We can understand the limits of human function, and through that, we actually learn a great deal about the way in which the body works, and importantly for us, we're looking at that both physically and cognitively, so in terms of brain function, and if we can understand these mechanisms, so we can bring it back to the man on the street. Well, the last bit we want to show you is here, and this is where they test the athlete's strength and performance. I might just look like a normal gym here, but it isn't. Over here, they've got some really sophisticated scientific equipment, which allows the scientists here uh, to work on the link between diet, muscle mass, and performance. You're watching Swipe. Coming up, the arrests made over alleged Bitcoin scams in Germany and China. But first, Gran Turismo's creator, Kazunori Yamauchi, is pretty much a gaming god to fans of the franchise. So what better way to celebrate his legacy than naming a street after him? And not just any street. Ronda in Spain will feature in the sixth edition of the game. So in a special two-day event, the game went to Spain. Sky's Katie Spencer put on her open-backed Velcro-fastened leather driving gloves and sent us this report. The Puente Nuevo Bridge is an impressive piece of architecture which divides the city of Ronda. But who needs to travel to southern Spain when the virtual version looks like this? For the last 15 years, Gran Turismo has set the standard for the racing genre. Now in its sixth incarnation, its creator is promising an experience that's even closer to the real thing. Wherever Kazunori Yamochi goes, there's no shortage of fans, and in Ronda, he received a rock star-like reception. In recognition of the cultural impact of computer games, the city has afforded him with the same honour they gave Ernest Hemingway and Orson Welles by naming a street after him. I think if by making Gran Turismo I'm receiving this honour today, it might mean that the makers of video games have reached a point where they're equal to authors, actors, even the politicians in the world. And that really makes me happy to be doing what I've been doing all these years. Today's biggest brands jump at the chance to be included in Gran Turismo. It's one of Sony's most popular franchises, selling over 70 million copies around the world. The GT Academy has also helped turn several gamers into pro drivers. So just what is it about the driving simulator that's proven so popular? The concept is very simple. It's to convey the beauty of the cars, the beauty of the environment, the speed, the light, the atmosphere and the feel. Ronda not only features in the game's photo mode, but it's also a new course maker location. Cause for celebration for the 36,000 people who live here. Everyone that comes to Ronda falls in love with the city, so we're very grateful. Where gaming has led the way, the movie world looks set to follow. Sony has confirmed a film based on Gran Turismo is currently in development. Testament perhaps of how the rest of the entertainment industry is now playing catch up with the gaming world. Katie Spencer, Sky News. You're watching Swipe coming up. Dust off your dance moves. We're looking at the games which are set to be big sellers this Christmas. But first, here's a roundup of anything you might have missed over the last few days. Police have picked up five people in connection with Bitcoin scams. In Germany, two suspected fraudsters were arrested in connection with an investigation which found a botnet being used to secretly generate the virtual currency by Bitcoin mining on other people's PCs. Three people were also detained in China after investors were cut off from their funds when a trading platform was shut down without warning. An American hacker claims he can control other people's drones whilst they're still in the air. With a radio-controlled quadcopter, a Raspberry Pi and two transmitters, the Skyjack system claims to be able to hijack nearby devices. Sammy Kamka is a bit of an expert at these things, 
back in 2005. He managed to hack into MySpace and shut it down. As soon as it finds any other drones, it hacks into that drone's wireless network, disconnects the owner, and then takes over that drone. So my drone is flying around, finds drones, takes them over, and then begins controlling them under my command. Sticking with drones now, and is this the future of parcel delivery or merely a clever PR stunt? Amazon has announced it hopes to use drones to eventually deliver parcels to your door. There are a few caveats, though. You have to live within 10 miles of one of their fulfillment centres and not be ordering something huge. Say, for example, Amazon head honcho Jeff Bezos' yacht. Now, brace yourself for some hardcore nerdy news. USB cables, they're annoying, right? Especially when you try to put them in the wrong way. Well, fear not. Developers have announced a new version of the connector plug that will be reversible. Don't get too excited, though. They're not likely to come to market until 2016. So, who do you reckon would be the most searched for person on the internet in the UK? Well, for me, it would have to be myself. But no, according to search engine Bing, the most searched for celebrity is... Justin Bieber. Sometimes I despair. Interestingly, the other nine in the top ten were all women, including the likes of Kim Kardashian, Rihanna and Selena Gomez. I might just have had something to do with that. Rev up your engine, prepare for the pirates and get ready to strut your stuff. Christmas is getting closer and there's going to be a gaming battle to be a stocking bestseller. So we've drafted in games expert Luke Carmali to talk us through the games he thinks will come out on top. He is not staying the night! You know, I've been in this game for a lot of years, and I got out alive. Grand Theft Auto V is the game that really needs no introduction. Um, and yeah, it came out in September, but there's been a lot of updates since then um, that makes it really worth revisiting. So the main update since then is the Beach Bum content pack. So it basically enables you to take on either a camper van or a dune buggy and just explore this fictionalized ver version of Los Angeles. On top of that, there's also the fact that the online component, which is the multiplayer part of the game, didn't really work when it came out in September. There were a lot of issues. Now, however, that's been fixed and the potential for where the game and the series are going to go in future is huge. So we don't know if it's going to go on next-gen consoles just yet, but if for any reason you missed it on current-gen consoles, now's the time to rectify that, and it's easily the best value game that you can get this year. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag is the latest entry in the very popular Assassin's Creed franchise. Um, you may have heard of this uh, franchise before. Castle is an assassin. This time around, it takes place in the golden age of pirates. You taught me how to live in liberty and die defiant. You're in the Caribbean, you're going over the waves, so whether you want to kind of be creeping through jungles or searching ruins or, you know, just harpooning whales on, on the open waves. It's all, all doable. Um, seeing as the weather's about to get a bit colder, nice bit of escapism set in the Caribbean, which we like. Um, but, you know, it's a fantastic game and you shouldn't be put off by the fact it's the fourth entry in the franchise because, really, you don't need to have played any of the previous games. It assumes very little knowledge. Um, and it's great fun, lots to do, huge open world, hours of entertainment. Just Dance 2014 may seem a bit frivolous, but the fact of the matter is, it's the latest entry in the best-selling dance franchise of all time. Christmas is all about frivolity, so if you're looking for a game to crack out on Boxing Day and play with the entire family, look no further. Additionally, this is the first version of the game to be available on next-gen consoles, so it takes advantage of all the new technology of the Xbox One. Um, and in particular, the Xbox One's new Kinect picks it up really well, and there's songs from Psy, Lady Gaga, ABBA, like Bob Marley, so you should be able to find something for everyone to have, have a little dance to. Need for Speed Rivals is actually in a very fortunate position because Drive Club and the crew have both been delayed to 2014, which means it's actually the only arcade racer available for next-gen consoles right now. The things I've done. A better person would feel bad. It's incredibly exciting. This time around, you get to play as either a cop or a racer and pick your side. It's an open world, so you get to drive around the city and it blurs the lines between single and multiplayer, so your friends can just pop up in your city and you know you can start races with them whenever, whenever you fancy. So it's a very exciting game, and if you're looking for a racing fix on the next-gen consoles, it's pretty much all you've got for the foreseeable future. That's your lot for this week. Remember, you can catch up with the breaking tech stories all week on Sky News for iPad, our smartphone apps, and skynews.com. We'll see you next time.